Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In the previous video, we talked about configuring Nginx and having a simple static website hosted on our local Debian virtual machine. And uh, if we go back and look at our roadmap, we have covered until here, until 19. So now comes the more interesting aspects of it, such as getting our website onto the internet. So that would be the next step. To actually have our website served from a domain name that is accessible across the internet before we actually get started on that we need to talk about ens and domain names and how it works so so our goal is to get our simple website onto the internet and have a domain name point to it and to achieve that we need to cover how does the domain names work or in other words how does dns work so you may be thinking like you know why should i even know this well if you are the one managing the infrastructure most probably you will be the one managing domain names too so there will be times where you will have to manage dns records you will have to create subdomains and uh, uh, maybe even manage a dns server itself so most of the times you will not be running your own dns server you will probably be using amazon's route 53 or something like that but it's extremely important to understand how dns works because a lot of things are dependent on DNS and uh, DNS is one of the fundamental basic building blocks of the internet. Even if you are not a DevOps engineer, it's extremely useful to have a basic understanding of how the DNS works. Let's get started on how does the DNS work. So DNS stands for domain name system. So there are four main components to it. The first one is DNS recursors. The second one is root DNS servers. The third one is TLD name servers. And the fourth one is authoritative name servers. Okay, the first one is recursive DNS server or a recursor. So this is the first point of contact from the client. For example, if you are using our web browser, our web browser is the client. And the first point of contact is the DNS recursive server or a recursor. You may have configured in your network configuration the you know DNS recursor such as 8.8.8.8 or 1.1.1. So these are the IP addresses of the DNS recursors. For every DNS request, the first request goes to the DNS recursor. You don't have to rely on a server like this. You can even run your own DNS recursor locally, but that's for another video. Another important thing is the root DNS servers. This sits at the root of the domain name system hierarchy. Again, I'm gonna talk about them in detail when I actually explain how it works. But for now, just keep these things in mind. There are 13 root DNS servers. When I say 13, it does not mean that there are only 13 physical servers. It just means that there are 13 different IP addresses and there may be hundreds or even thousands of DNS servers behind them. And every single DNS recursive uh, resolver software on this planet will have the list of these 13 IP addresses programmed into them. And the next one is authoritative DNS servers. So these are the DNS servers with uh, actual records of your domain. For example, if you have your domain bought from uh, GoDaddy, you probably will be using GoDaddy's domain name servers. Or let's say you have your domains managed, uh, DNS managed by Route 53. In that case, these Route 53 servers are called the authoritative DNS servers. They are called authoritative because they are the only servers with the actual DNS records for your domain. And the other one is TLD name servers. So TLD stands for top level domain names. Things like .com, .org, .net, etc. are called top level domain names. And they also have their own DNS name servers and they are called the TLD name servers. So these name servers contains the information about which all domains comes under a particular top level domain like .com for example. And this is how it works. Let's say this is your web browser which is the DNS client in this case and you are trying to access www.google.com. The first request goes to the uh, DNS recursive resolver. Let's say in this case you are using 8.8.8.8. So the browser is asking hey can you give me the IP address of www.google.com? So this is what? A DNS recursor. So what it does is it first checks its cache to see if this domain has been resolved already. If it has, then it just takes that from the cache and gives it back to the browser or the client. 
Now, if it's not found on the cache, the first request from the DNS recursor goes to the root DNS servers. So, as I said before, this DNS recursors have a list of 13 different root DNS server IP addresses. It makes a request to any one of that 13 IP addresses asking, hey, what is the IP address of www.google.com? So what the root DNS server will say, oh, I don't know the IP address of www.google.com, but I know the IP addresses of DNS servers for .com. Why don't you go and ask them? So the root DNS server responds with the .com, which is a top level domain name, name server. Now the recursor have the IP address of the name server of the .com top level domain. So it asks what is the IP address of www.google.com. Now it says I don't know the IP address of www.google.com but I know where you can find them. And it responds with the name server of the google.com domain. So let's say for example it is ns1.google.com. Now our resolver knows where to ask for www.google.com. So this is what TLD DNA name server, this is root DNS server and this is the authoritative DNS server. And in our case it is ns1.google.com. I'm just giving an example it may not be correct but we'll check that in some time. So now our resolver knows that it needs to ask ns1.google.com so it does that. And because this is an authoritative DNS server, it actually has the DNS entry for www.google.com and it responds with that IP address. Now after this third iteration, our DNS recursor have finally found the IP address for www.google.com and it responds back to our browser which made the request. And it also stores that information in the cache so that any other subsequent request for the same domain name can be just easily and quickly retrieved from the cache instead of having to go through all these steps. Now let's see this in action. I'm gonna show you how exactly it looks in real life. So we use a command called dig to find out the DNS information about a specific domain name. Dig is very useful and you will probably be using it a lot if you are to work with servers and domain names and as such. It's a really good to have tool. Now if we just do dig space google.com now it comes up with a bunch of information and here you can see there are two sections the first one is the question section and the second one is answer section the question section is i want www.google.com's a record so in dns there are different types of records these are called resource records resource records one such record is a record a record stands for an IP address. There are other types of resource records. Why don't you learn more about them as an exercise? So learn about how, uh, what are the DNS resource records available there and what are the differences and what are they used for? Okay, so back to our dig command. So in the question section, we are asking for an A record for the www.google.com domain. And in the answer section, we got that the A record is this IP address. Here we can see the server address which actually gave us this response. In my case, this is 8.8.8. .8. So now you can actually change the server by using dig uh, google.com at the rate any other uh, you know, DNS server. For example, let me just give 1.1.1.1. And here, here also you can see we have an IP address. You can also give plus short. So that you get only the IP address or only the answer without any information. But more importantly, right now we are trying to understand how DNS works and we can actually see how it works using the dig command itself but with the plus trace option. All right. So what did I do? I did dig www.google.com plus trace. So now this is going to show the entire path of our DNS, uh, you know, DNS request. So this is showing from the perspective of the recursor itself. 
So the first request is sent to the root DNS servers. So as I said, there are 13 different root DNS servers and uh, it picks one, uh, you know, among these 13 and makes a request to that. So the root DNS server responds with the top level domain name, uh, name server address. In this case, it is com because it's www.google.com and it responds with the name server for the TLD. In this case, we have a bunch of them, you know, j dot, d dot, a dot, uh, you know, whatever. Let me go back to the root again. The recursor knows the list of these IP addresses, these domain names already because it's already programmed into it, as I mentioned before. So that's why it says it already knows that. So this response came directly from the recursor itself. But the next one is the top level domain names name servers. This request came from this IP address, which is i.rootservers.net, which is one of the 13 root DNS servers. So it just picked one in random and made the request to that and it came back with the answer. Okay, com has these many name servers. So now our recursor makes a request here. If you see, it made a request to h dot which is the top level domain name dot com's name server. And you got the response. Okay, google.com has a name server of ns1.google.com, ns2.google.com, ns3.google.com, etc. And in the next part of the uh, next part of the DNS query, it made the request to ns1.google.com asking for the IP address of www.google.com. So ns1.google.com is an actual DNS server with the you know DNS entries corresponding to all these domains. I will show you how it actually works or how it actually looks in a real scenario. I'm gonna show you an example of how it how exactly it looks in real life. Okay, so you can buy domain names from any domain registrar such as Godaddy, Namecheap or uh, Google Domains, etc. Now I have a bunch of domains I bought from Google Domains and this is how it looks. So if I log into domains.google.com, here I have a domain called devopswork.com I bought from Google Domains and this is how it looks. The dashboard for the DNS settings, it looks like this. Now if you, if you see here, when you buy a domain name, by default, the domain name provider will use uh, will give their own DNS servers so that you can add records. So I'm just going to use that for now. OK, so this is my name. Uh, this is my domain name, devopswork.com. And under the name server settings, I have chosen to use the Google domain name servers. So this means my authoritative DNS servers are now run by Google. And they have the values ns cloud e1.google domains on e2, e3, e4, etc. So now we can verify this by using dig. When we are using dig, you can specify which type of records you want to you know, see in the response by specifying the record name here. In this case, I want to see the ns record. ns means name server. This means I want to see the name servers for the domain devopswork.com. And when I enter that, in the answer section, I can see that the name servers are ns1, uh, sorry, ns cloud e1, google domains.com, and e2, e3, e4, etc. Now, these are the authoritative DNS servers for my domain devopswork.com. So that means whatever I add here, and so here, this is how you manage the DNS records for your domain in Google domains. Let's say, for example, I want to add blog. Uh, devopswork.com or something let's say i want to point it to some random ip address i'm just going to point it to 1.1.1 you know you can point it to any address you want because you control the dns whether it will work or not when you're trying to access that website is a different story obviously now you can see that i have added an entry called a blog here so now these are called subdomains why is it called a subdomain well, that is because our main domain is devopswork.com and this is called the apex domain. And whatever we add here, such as blog.devopswork.com or www.devopswork.com or anything like that is called a subdomain. So here I have added blog. 
this resource record is a type a record a record means an ip address and it has a ttl of one hour that means in theory these dns recursors can cache this value this response for one hour so if you have a higher value that means it may take more time for your changes to reflect let's take a look at what happened to log.devopswork.com as you can see it, it has replied with 1.1.1.1 because i have added that entry here now what if i want to use another dns server what if i want to change the authoritative dns server from you know google domains to something else let's say for example there are other free domain name provider domain name server providers such as cloudflare if you want to use a cloudflare cdn you need to change your dns servers to use their own you know their dns servers here i have logged into cloudflare.com and i am under the dns settings here now if you are not familiar with it don't worry about it i'm gonna show you how to get a free domain after some time and uh, you can try that with the cloudflare's free account and uh, you know mess with it so now under this dns settings so what do i want to do so as i said before now i'm trying to use cloudflare as my authoritative dns servers or my dns provider and if i come here it says cloudflare name servers to use cloudflare ensure your authoritative dns servers or name servers have changed these are your assigned cloudflare name servers so what it says is for us to be able to use cloudflare's dns servers we need to change the ns record which is the name server record in our domain name to these two values so let me just change that okay so it says it will take effect in within you know 48 hours but it usually doesn't take that long let me just try to add a new record let's say uh, i'm gonna add like a record called two and it points to um, let's say two dot two dot two dot two don't worry about this dns only i'm just gonna use dns only right now because i am not gonna use uh, cloudflare cloudflare's caching uh, for this demonstration purposes i'm just gonna use it for dns okay i have added that entry so now if i do you can see that it has came up with a response 2.2.2 .2 .2. So now what happens if i add a new dns entry in the google's dns settings let's say i did uh, foo2 and that is pointing to 3.3.3 so i am doing foo2.devopsolo.com but you know it didn't came up with any result it just said no, no result so why is that well, that is because we are changed we have changed the authoritative dns server here and whatever change that we do here you know in the dns record is not affecting our actual dns records because right now our authoritative dns server is managed by cloudflare here so whatever record that we add here is that one that matters so now if you can afford to or uh, if you're interested in it i would suggest you buy a domain name to play with it uh, I suggest to use Google domains because it's been pretty good for me. So you just go to Google domains and search for whatever domain. Let's say I'm just going to search for something that that is like an obviously not taken. But so yeah, I mean, it is available. Uh, you know, you could just buy it if you want. But for testing purposes, you can actually get some free domain names. So there is this website called dot dot tk i'm not sure if it works anymore i haven't you know i have used it like many many years ago but not sure if it works anymore i just give it a try i guess so that's pretty much it about dns and domain names if you like the video please leave a like and uh, that's it for this video see you again later